This is one of the switches of the milling machine on the fridge that goes with this machine there is two of them the problem is that one of them here is broke and the other one is missing the original back plates of these uh, switches are made of aluminium but I would like to make a new one out of this piece of steel because for the moment it's all I have. This used to be a piece of angle iron and I used a piece of it in another project and now this part I have to cut off this lip, this rim here. This lip is 10 millimeters by 110 and I need to go down 12 millimeters and that raises a very interesting question shall I use the milling machine or the shaper? I made a little bit of calculations up here is for the shaper the width we said was 10 millimeters on the shaper I will use a step over of two tenths of a millimeter which means in 50 strokes the width for the, the, the surface will be cut with using a cutting speed of 20 meters per minute which is a good speed for using high speed steel it will take 30 seconds to cut one time this surface a cut of one millimeter deep 12 times a total of six minutes cutting time only the cutting time not the setup and all these other things but let's take only cutting time now the milling machine the length of cut will be of course larger because you have the part plus twice the diameter of the cutter let's say in total 100 35 millimeters more or less I don't know what feet exactly I use but it's about uh, 50 millimeters and a bit per minute which means one cut in the surface takes 2 minutes and 30 seconds 12 times because I'm gonna take one millimeter cuts same as the shaper same cutting speed as the shaper which means 12 times 2 minutes and a half 30 minutes of cutting time 6 on the shaper 30 on the milling machine I think my choice is made a little bit a change of plans over here First I square up three sides and bring it to a little bit above the finished dimensions and that's all this shape. And when that's done the fourth side I can cut off in the pencil will be much easier. And that's false. Now that these three sides here are cut now I have enough room in the vise of my benzo to put it in this way the other way around doesn't fit first I will try like this but I didn't trim this uh, machine yet still not and so it refuses a bit to cut straight but I'm gonna try anyway I think it worked. To bring the four sides to dimension, final dimension, I installed it here in the mill because I can of course do it in the shaper but I wanted to play with the milling machine. So now 
I installed it on parallels so now I can cut two sides in one setup and then flip it 90 degrees to the other two sides and then drill a hole in the center so I can hold it down with a screw like this one. Let's do Turn on the shower. I installed the part on a sort of uh, hold down system, uh, whatever, held in place with one bolt so I can work the top surface. The four sides are finished so no problem. I will fly cut it and I hope that one bolt is enough to hold it in place. Let's find out. This surface is now cleaned up and I'm ready to drill the four mounting holes. Let's do. And a countersink. <laughs> to make the radius here, to have a little bit more finished part, first I thought do it with my uh, chamfering tool in the milling machine. But here on the shaper it will be much quicker. So I installed my cutting tool at 45 degrees and all I have to do is chamfer, spin my change of plans. Because I don't have a radius tool I want to cut at 45 degrees. But this part is rounded. I think it should be better if they look the same. So let's make a round form tool. Something like this for example. Right, let's see if it works. looks round. While I had this part here in the shaper I recut a bit the surface because I was not happy at all with the surface finish of the milling machine. So shear tool and now looks way better. Time to organize a little bit of late work making this kind of bushing thing here where the mechanism goes through. Maybe I can use this piece of printer here. But first let's fit this shaft in here and this thing in here. Yes. 
that will be a press fit. Just perfect. So far so good. I think it starts to look like something. I made this bizarre looking thing here, which should officially resemble this one. Of course, in Germany, they made a way better job than I did, but it works. Now, I would like to make some kind of knob a little bit this idea to replace this one that is broken. But I don't know. I think it would be nice to have them both in aluminium. Sticker time! I received this week stickers from Tom Tasmania, from Do Canada, and two from States, and that is Mick and James. As you can see, Dear sticker senders, your stickers are already on the cheap door. Now, Mick, he did send me a fantastic little note here with nothing written on it. That's perfect, so you can write nothing wrong. Yeah? I suppose everyone knows Tom in Tasmania and he makes fantastic videos. And he's so good that one day he won the Emma Spare Room Machine Shop Tool Making Competition. Go and have a look at Tom's channels because some time ago I sent stickers to Tom with my Canon. Go and have a look. We also have Do in Canada and he's got a web shop, a website you can visit and you can make your choice and he sent building plans if you want or he sent the make-yourself kits for home machinists. I think that's a brilliant idea. So Duke, I wish you all the luck you need, all the success you need with your web shop. And then there's James in the States. It's a new to me channel. I watched only one video, but I liked it very much. The fun is, it's James and the stickers is Jim's workshop. I don't know why, but I'm sure he will explain one day. So go and have a look, and of course, as always, links to the channels in description. Last time I experimented a bit melting aluminium. And the reason for that was I would like to make a knob in aluminium. Now, why in aluminium? Because I want to, that's all. I made a little form here where I will pour my aluminium in. I have highly professional melting pot thing. I will light the fire. I built some brick walls here. In fact, a firewall. Let's see if it works. It happens sometimes that the local wildlife invited itself in the garden. Cylinder head unit. Soup is ready. And here's the result. Two aluminiums. This side was the bottom of the casting. So of course this side is the top. And I will start cutting here to see what we have. Oh, ho. that's not good. The surface finish is crap. It starts to clean up.
I'm just curious to know how the other side is. Let's have a look. Yes. And this is the progress so far. Two knobs in one, made out of cylinder head hume. Now, the cleanup could be better, but uh, I think it's gonna work. Before I'm gonna separate them to make, of course, two knobs, I think it's easier to first drill two holes here to put set screws in place. The thing is drilled and tapped and cut in half. Let's make some features in here. A bit of style, a handle or something. Whatever, we'll see. Let's see if it works. This is the low speed and high speed. This is the main switch.